Hello, I'm Bonnie Rabakoff, your host of In the Kitchen with Bonnie. This week we are featuring our third in a series of In the Cellar by Marquee Wines. We are in the wine room at the Gaslight Grill with one of the owners of Marquee, Chris Cribb. Chris, thank you for inviting us to your cellar. This week we're going to look at the wines of Spain, but Chris, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about the concept for Marquis Selections, how it was founded, what your philosophy is for what you do. Sure, Marquis Selections uh, is about uh, getting ready to be a 10 year old company mm -hmm. and we uh, are focused on having green, sustainable, organic wineries in our portfolio mm -hmm. and in finding those what we've also put out as our mandate is to find ones that have a great value for the price. So uh, what we've got is a uh, global portfolio yes. that comes from a lot of different countries and each of those countries we found one specific producer to work with. We started down in Australia uh, back in 2003 and developed uh, from there to a number of other regions including Spain which we get to talk about today. Which so. we get to talk about today. Okay, so why the Yecla region in Spain and why this particular bodega? Sure. Um, well, Spain is a fairly big country in mm -hmm. terms of winemaking. It's really right up there with France in terms of you can make wine almost anywhere in Spain uh -huh. just like you can about anywhere in France. And where we went is uh, down in the southwest. Mm -hmm. So you go down to the very bottom of Spain and kind of towards the, the higher plains, uh, kind of a drier area. Mm -hmm. And the reason we went down to that region is because of one grape, uh, Monastrell. Okay. Uh, we have been experimenting with Monastrell and have done Monastrell blends from our Australian wineries for years. And uh, we really just like the portfolio or like the grape yes. and we, we like to focus in on how it could be used and the uh, the region in Yecla and Bodegas La Parisma really uh, that's their star. That's their, so this is their star? Yes. Okay and so what do we have here? So what we have uh, this is Trapillo. Yes. So Bodegas La Parisma uh, is is a cooperative that was formed in 1946 so right after the war and the, um, the winemakers there bring all of their, um, their old vines or their products to the winery and this is specifically a group of, the, of wines that were ungrafted so these are still on the same rootstock oh that, they were, that they were hundreds of years ago. So, so we're so. talking century old grapes. Yes. yes. And so, that, so not having phylloxera was a, a bug that came into uh, came they into the vineyards that, yeah. and they survived that. Yep. So this is just really something you don't see very often. So they make only um, a couple thousand cases of this per year and uh, it is aged in oak barrels for about 18 months to really, they take a, a big hefty red wine and kind of smooth the edges off of it with that with that oak aging. So what kind of, what's the flavor profile? Flavor profile is um, deep dark cherries, it's got a little bit of that um, uh, cigar box, uh, a little bit of smoky kind of, kind yeah, of yeah, smoky, yeah. like kind of that smoky barbecue, mm -hmm. um, not Bar the sweet, but yeah. um, the the essence of, like it's got a little smell of leather to it, uh, it it really, you it's know, really rich and earthy, rich and earthy, mm -hmm. and um, in terms of the, the flavor profile, it's, it's kind of it's dry still. It's got okay. a, it's got a big mouthfeel and it's got some hints of chocolate to it. What do we want to eat with this? What do we want to pair it with? I, you know, I I still I I love a, a nice cut steak for for something <laughs> like this. But um, I think this also really paired well with something like a a grilled uh, pork chop. Uh, you know, something that's uh, that's got some some heft to it. I like to uh, to in also. In Kansas City barbecue, could it still it, it, it still work? Kansas City work barbecue. With Kansas City barbecue. Okay. Uh, what temperature do we want to serve this? We serve this, you know, right out of the uh, the cellar. Okay. Um, so, cellar being 68 degrees is what they what it. Uh, and we need be. to remember that because when we say room temperature, that term apparently came from the days of the cellars, which were actually cooler than the living our living areas. 
So maybe in the high 60s for this? High 60s, you know, if you've got a nice air conditioned room, it's 80 degrees, something mm -hmm. like it'd be fine, but just a little bit of that chill will um, will go ahead and, and help it out. Oh. And now this is, this is also a wine that really would uh, benefit from being open for a while and possibly decanting it. And possibly decanting it. So, okay, yes. so we would remember that for this Spanish wine. Yeah. No, our white wine. On what our do white, we have? we're going to um, we're going to mm -hmm. another varietal that uh, is known in Spain, but not as what, well known here in the United States. It's called Macabeo. Okay. And Macabeo is a little bit like a Pinot Grigio in its body and its flavor. A little uh, sweeter. A little sweeter. sweeter. It's got a little bit of a nuttiness to it, mm -hmm. um, and it's it's known for also kind of being a floral wine. It's got a little bit more of like the geraniums and um, so so some, some of the neat complex floral. for a white wine. Yeah. Would you say? Complex, but it's got a very light finish to it. Okay. So it's one of those wines that you. You taste it, and then it just kind of cleans your mouth out. And um, what do we want to pair it with? I, I would definitely pair that with something um, that's got a little bit of yeah, maybe a nice fettuccine Alfredo, something that's got a little bit of creaminess to it. Would go well with the, it with the lightness. Well with cream. Um, cream based sauces. You know, I think that it would really stand up if you were looking at uh, trying to do other types of. Grilled chicken, you know, something like that. Um, and fish dishes would fish dishes fish as well. Yeah, would, would work. The winery itself has been doing a, a large expansion into Asia, and which brings me into thinking about this as a great wine for Asian food. The, the Macabeo, it's got that, um, it's got that mouth coating feel and that yes. clean, cleanliness. That if you had some spicy Thai or some stir fry vegetables or something like that, it would stand up uh, stand up really well and uh, be a really nice pairing. So, Wine Spectator, you've taken a great deal of care with your selections, and here Wine Spectator has come up and said, uh, in the last five years, there haven't been any wines that have had higher ratings and better values than Marquis Selections. How did you earn that distinction? Well. Maybe I need to raise the prices, but <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a it's something that we're really proud of because of the fact that we have taken that time in the uh, the selection process. All of our wines are tasted against competition that we know is the best in the region. Um, when, I, when we brought these wines in, for example, uh, Yekla and the Monastrels were not as big, but there's a region right next to Yekla called Humiya. You might see a little bit of this in your, your local store. Uh, it is also Monastrel. So we took the best Monastrels, set them together, and only purchased the Monastrels, our Monastrels, that were better than the competition. Um, and we do a lot to, um, to make sure that the wines are unique. That when you talk about Macabeo, there's really not thousands of competitions. So I think the wine writers from Wine Spectator, Robert Parker, Wine and Spirits Magazine that have looked at our portfolio really get that we're trying to find something that's different. I think what is exciting about the Marquis selections is that when you're entertaining at home, especially for people who have a sense or appreciation of wine, mm -hmm. that you're going to really provide an experience that they're not going to find at every dinner party that they go to. So how do we learn about where to find Marquis wines and um, purchase them? Sure. Well, to be the star at your next dinner party, <laughs> okay. you need to, uh, to learn and, and check out these two wines, for example, are part of our whole global portfolio. Yes. We're available, um, and you can find all the information about all the rest of the wines at www.marquee.com. And that's M-A-R-Q-U-E-E.com. -E 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 mm -hmm. um, you can give us a ring if you want to uh, find out more information at our toll-free 888-MARQUEE uh, phone number. Mm -hmm. um, send us an email at info at marquee and on our website we've got a little section that's devoted to retailers and restaurants in your area so if you want to go out there you can kind of see where these uh, these wines are available okay well Chris thank you we love being in the cellar with you please stay tuned next week where we visit and learn more about the wines of Australia